Hi, in this video I will introduce you to a unit called the electron volt and then explain the concepts of ionization and excitation. In physics we usually use the joule to measure energy. You may have also come across the kilowatt hour which is a much larger unit of energy that is useful for recording how much electricity a house has consumed, for example. When we're considering particle or quantum physics, the energies we work with are very, very small. We could use units like the femtojoule, which is uh, 10 to the minus 15 joules, or even the attojoule, 10 to the minus 18. But usually physicists instead prefer to use a unit called the electron volt shortened to EV, lowercase e, capital V. Let's take a one volt battery and apply it across a couple of parallel plates. Imagine we place a single electron on the negative plate. When we switch the circuit on, the battery will do work on that electron to accelerate it to the positive plate. This amount of work is the definition of the electron volt. We know that voltage is equal to work done per unit charge, so it follows that the work done on this charge is equal to the voltage multiplied by the charge. In this case the potential difference is 1 volt and the charge of an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So the work done and therefore the definition of our electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. To convert from joules to electron volts, we divide by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And to go from electron volts to joules, we multiply by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. If you're not sure if you've gone the right way, joules will always be a much smaller number than electron volts. In particle and quantum physics, it will usually be 10 to a very small power, such as 10 to the minus 19 or 10 to the minus 16. You may sometimes see kilo electron volts, mega electron volts, and even giga electron volts. These work just the same as for any other units. These are a thousand, a million, and a billion electron volts, respectively. Right, on to the main business of ionization and excitation. You may have come across ionization before, either in chemistry or physics. An ion is simply an atom that does not have the same number of electrons as protons and therefore it will have a, a charge. A positive ion does not have enough electrons to balance out the protons, whereas a negative ion has too many electrons. Any process that creates an ion is called ionization. For example, if we pass gamma radiation through a substance, the gamma photons have got enough energy to knock electrons right out of their orbits of the atoms, thus creating an ion. Another way we can ionize something is by passing an electric current through a gas in a fluorescent tube. In this diagram, the atoms are these yellow dots with energy levels or shells around them, and the conduction electrons flowing in the circuit are these orange electrons flowing from negative to positive. If these electrons have got enough energy when they collide with an atom, it's possible that they can knock an orbital electron right off the atom, thus creating an ion. So this is how we can ionize a gas with electricity. Let's stick with this idea of passing currents through, through fluorescent tubes. What happens if the flowing electrons do not have enough energy to entirely knock an orbital electron off its atom? At certain lower voltages, the electrons may have just the right amount of energy to instead knock an electron into a higher energy level, or shell, as you may know it from chemistry. This is called excitation. When excitation occurs, the kinetic energy of the flowing electrons, the current electrons, is transferred into the potential energy of the atomic electron, that has now moved to a higher energy level. This means that the current in the tube will actually fall at this particular voltage. Every atom has particular discrete values at which this can happen. These are called excitation energies. 
For example, mercury atoms can be excited by an energy of 4.9 electron volts. So what voltage would we have to apply to a tube of mercury vapour in order to cause excitation? Well, the answer is 4.9 volts. So now you see why the electron volt can be a useful unit. Finally, what happens next to our excited electrons? Well, they will eventually relax back to their ground state, releasing a photon of radiation as it goes. This is the basis for how fluorescent tubes light our homes, but more of that in a later video.